In this episode, we'll take a look at the Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun microphone. Now, to start, this entire episode is recorded with the Sennheiser MKE 600. It's boomed just above me right here. That's recording into a Sound Devices 888 audio recorder, and I'm syncing that up to my video in post. Now, we didn't apply any sort of post-processing aside to normalize the levels up to minus 23 LUFS, which is the standardized level, and that's exactly what you're hearing through this entire video. First up, let's get you some audio samples, and what's interesting is there are so many different microphones out there, <laughs> even many in this same price range, and we can't cover them all here, but what you can do is I'll put some links for other microphones that are relatively comparable or perhaps less expensive, maybe a little bit more expensive. You can pull those up in another tab in your browser here, and you can play them alternately and be able to compare the sound of different microphones. So let's go ahead and get you these raw samples entirely unprocessed and normalized to minus 23 LUFS. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you were quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you were quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you were quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that two and two made four, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. Now, this is a directional shotgun style microphone, and let's give you a sample of what that means in practical terms. I'd like to demonstrate here the off axis coloration and how the microphone changes in sound when you turn it off axis. Um, so, I'm talking directly into the front of the microphone right now. Now, as I turn off axis to 90 degrees, talking into the side of the microphone, you can see and hear that the sound of the microphone changes pretty dramatically. I keep turning and talking to the back of the microphone. This is what it sounds like. And then as we come back to the side of the microphone, again, a sample here, and then back into the front of the microphone. So you can see how it sounds quite a bit different off axis. What that means in practical terms is generally, of course, you wanna keep it aimed at the sound source, in this case, the person talking, but any sounds that are coming from other places around where you're recording can actually sound quite otherworldly, very different than they would normally sound in real life. So that's just something to keep in mind. It is a characteristic. All directional microphones have this characteristic. <laughs> Some are more dramatic in how they render off-axis sounds versus others. This microphone that's one of the things I think that relative, for example, to um, a much more expensive shotgun microphone, say, for example, a DPA 4017B. They put a lot of engineering, for example, into that microphone to make the off-axis sound a little bit less colored uh, than something like this. So just something to understand when you're getting into a less expensive microphone. That's one of the characteristics you'll often find with less expensive microphones. They will sound potentially, depending on, it, it differs from mic to mic, potentially quite different off axis versus on axis. One thing I often look for when I'm evaluating a microphone is how it responds to sibilance. Let's get you a sample of that. Now, sibilance is the kind of sizzling sound you hear when some people say, when anyone says potentially, especially some voices more than others. The sizzling sound you hear when the person says S or C or any words that have those sounds in them. Here's an example. She sells seashells by the seashore. By the seashore, she sells seashells. How much self-noise does this microphone make? And by self-noise, I want to be very clear on what that is. Self-noise is noise that the electronics within the microphone generate. And it generally sounds like a hiss. 
it's not the same as noise that's in the actual space where you're recording. That is not self noise. That's a different thing. That's ambient noise. So <laughs> what we did here is we just did a very practical sample. I have my studio space here. I've got a sound blanket to my left, to my right, one over here by the camera. I've got a blanket on this table here. I've got one down below me on the floor behind me here. So we've got a pretty quiet space. And so what I did is I recorded some audio of me talking. I left a silent portion where I didn't talk. And then I brought that audio into post. I normalized it up to minus 23 LUFS again, just a standard level. And at that, the reason I normalized to that level or get it to that loudness is that generally it doesn't require any sort of processing. It doesn't require any compression to be able to get it to that level. That's the main reason I do that. Then I measure the portion of silence. And what we found here is that that came out to minus 60 dB RMS max or minus 71 dB total RMS. So that's really pretty good. Normally I'm looking for anything below minus 60 at this level is a, an acceptable result. And really what is interesting about this, is if you add a low cut filter at mm, say 70 Hertz, that actually drops the RMS max to minus 65. So it's really a pretty good performance. Is it the best cleanest microphone in the world? No. Is it good? Is it acceptable? In my evaluation, absolutely yes. Now, one of the things that's very, I think, versatile about this microphone is that it's also really kind of made to work on top of your camera. So if you've got a maybe a mirrorless or a hybrid camera, um, it's got a shoe mount here that has a little shock mount. It also comes with an XLR, that's the output on the microphone, to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So you can attach this directly into your camera. Also, the microphone itself has a slot for a AA battery. That AA battery will last about 150 hours, according to Sennheiser. In my tests, I, I had it powered straight for 24 hours, and the battery still has charge left in it. So probably that 150 hours is about accurate. And what you can do is record directly to your camera. Here's a sample of that. If vlogging is your thing, this can work as well. Here we have it mounted on top of a GH5S and we have the input level set to the lowest possible on the Panasonic GH5S. And uh, it's getting actually dangerously hot at this distance. If we move a little farther away, um, that'll work. The, the GH cameras have, from my point of view, notoriously hot inputs, like there's not enough room to move them down. But watch what happens when I move a little farther away. Fundamentals here, people. If you move farther away, um, it's gonna sound farther away. That's just the reality of how microphones work. So keep that in mind. If you were planning to do like interviews and have the camera a couple meters away, uh, it's gonna sound a couple meters away. You really need to get it off the camera and boom it up over the person talking. You could get an extension cable and make that work. Or if you're using some other separate recorder, that could work as well. But there's a sample of how this might work as far as vlogging or maybe just seated interviews are concerned. The MKE 600 also includes a low cut filter. A low cut filter is useful for cutting out low frequency sound or noise. So that could be things like, for example, an air conditioner, some sort of low frequency hum or rumble in the room, and also perhaps a little bit of wind. It does affect the sound of the microphone just a little bit. Here's a sample. On the microphone, there is a low cut filter, also sometimes called a high pass filter two different names for the same thing. In this case, it's currently turned off. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, now the low cut or high pass filter is turned on. And what you're listening for is to hear if it makes any difference in my voice, especially cutting out some of the lower frequencies. That's what a low cut filter does, of course. Where it can typically be useful is if you have, if you're recording in a space where there's some rumble or perhaps a tiny bit of wind. It's not gonna do a lot for wind. You have to be careful with that. Some people think, oh, you can turn it on and it's just going to take care of wind. If you've got massive wind blowing across a microphone capsule, even with the foam cover on, you are still going to have massive distortion. However, it can be helpful if you're working in a space with maybe some air conditioning or some other low frequency rumble or other things like that going on. This is what it sounds like, again, with the low cut filter turned on. Let's go ahead and turn it back off. Okay, and this is with the low cut filter turned back off, so... You can hear the difference there. We're about 18 inches right now from the front of the microphone, roughly 35 centimeters. 
Now this included shock mount is really made for mounting on top of the camera. It has a shoe mount here, but it also has a quarter 20 tap on the bottom so you can attach any sort of quarter 20 screw. And you could put it on a boom pole. If you put it on a boom pole or if you put it on your camera, here's a little sample of what you might expect in terms of the noise of all that movement transferring to the microphone. We did do some RF immunity tests. Now, what is RF? RF is radio frequency. That's wireless signals. Sometimes those can interfere with microphones. It can actually make, you can actually hear the radio frequency a little bit. It's not a pleasant sound. Uh, what we did here is we did some tests with a phone and a wireless system. The phone, we had an LTE signal going. We also had Wi-Fi going actively. And we also set up this wireless microphone system at 500 megahertz and we didn't pick up any sort of interference around the microphone, even holding those two potential sources of interference right next to the microphone. So really good result there. The build quality of this microphone is fantastic as you would expect from Sennheiser. It is manufactured in Germany and everything about it is su suggests that it's going to last for a decade or more easily. So really great build quality there. The price of the microphone is $320 US. And I would say that for the, for what you're getting, for what, how it sounds, it's a really, it's a great deal. Here's, <laughs> here's my summary overall. First of all, it's a mid-priced XLR microphone that also could be used in a hybrid situation. That is to say on top of a camera with a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. It works well in either case. It works even better if you boom the microphone like we are doing here right over your talent so that or right in front of and over their, your talent so that you're getting the very best quality by having the sound source close to the microphone. I would probably, in terms of the sound quality of this microphone, I would choose this over the Deity S Mic 2, which actually was my favorite microphone in this price range until I tried this. So I had to change my mind on that. I would definitely say this is also a better choice than a Rode NTG2 or even an NTG4. Now, you can, I, I would definitely encourage you to go pull up again some of those reviews that I have listed down below in the description up in additional browser tabs and be able to play this microphone against some of the others that we've re reviewed over time and use your own ears. Whatever sounds best to you, that's totally legitimate. So if you want that comparison, there's a way to get it. Now, this microphone is substantially more expensive than most of the microphones that are made to fit on top of your hybrid or mirrorless camera. Things like the VideoMic NTG from Rode or the Deity D3 Pro. But to me, this one sounds a lot better. It's a lot, it's actually fairly substantially bigger. So I would say this is more a microphone that you would use in a boomed position on a professional camcorder or cinema camera if you needed a, you know, like an on-camera mic in those situations. And maybe something you're gonna use every once in a while on top of your hybrid camera, but um, that's kind of how it differs from those on-camera mics from my point of view. But it sounds, I think, a lot better than those on-camera mics. So definitely a trade-off. Now there is one other microphone I wanna mention here specifically that we've also listed down below. If you don't need that self-powering capability and the ability to connect it directly to a 3.5 millimeter microphone input on a camera, Another option that is very much worth looking at is the Audio-Technica AT-875R shotgun microphone. Again, I have a link for that review down below. That is a fantastic sounding microphone and it is less than $200. So an even better deal, again, if you don't need a microphone that can supply its own power with an inbuilt, well, not an inbuilt battery, but a AA battery, and that you don't really need to feed into a 3.5 millimeter microphone and put on a camera. I couldn't find a lot of cons on this microphone, <laughs> which I think is delightful. There's one thing. Um, this shock mount is okay. N not amazing, but okay. It's very low profile, very small, which I like. Uh, however, if you are going to put this on a boom pole, you cannot adjust the angle. So it's not really well suited for use on a boom pole. So just keep that in mind if you are going to put something on a boom pole. I mean, if you're just doing a seated interview like this, perfectly fine. But if you are gonna actually be hand booming, um, I would probably look at another shock mount instead of this one that was included.
So overall, there's my look at the Sennheiser MKE 600 shotgun microphone. I just want to say one other thing. If you already have one of these other microphones and you're getting pretty good results with it, stick with it. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that you need to sell your DDS mic too and run out and buy one of these. Not by any means. They're so close. They sound a little different, yes, but they're pretty close. And so unless you're really unhappy with your existing microphone in this price range, I'd stick with it. But this is a great option if you're in the market for a microphone in this range for the first time. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.